This is about sum and difference of angles. What I want to do in these few slides is to do a pretty careful derivation of the way it works in one case and then uh, let you mull over that a bit before you look at the book or further slide presentations to see some extra details. The idea is we want to consider how to combine angles. It's a natural thing to add or subtract angles and if you do that the trig function values of the combined angle ought to be related to what you started with. So let's set it up with angles alpha and beta. We'll put in angle alpha as in standard position from the positive x-axis to uh, this one looks like I, I drew it so it's in quadrant two. It could be anywhere. And the point on the unit circle has coordinates in terms of the trig functions sine and cosine of that angle alpha. Now let's put in beta and the trig function for beta correspond to this point on the unit circle cos and beta, sine beta as its values. Well, let's look at the angles alpha and beta as determining a difference. If I go alpha and subtract beta from that, that has the effect of only considering the angle opening from the terminal side of beta to the terminal side of alpha. So this angle would be measured by alpha minus beta. Let's put that angle in standard position. So alpha minus beta is again this angle alpha minus beta is this part of the angle and if I rotate that around so it's in standard position it is alpha minus beta there and the alpha minus beta in standard position has on the unit circle a uh, point with coordinates cosine and sine of that angle that difference alpha minus beta would be what that angle is. Well the point is this angle is the same as this angle these two angles subtend the same arc the span around the circle is the same from here to here as it is from here to here and so the chord that you draw in from one zero to this point matches the chord that you draw in uh, from the endpoints in terms of alpha and beta. This is the fundamental fact that lets you say what the relationship should be between the combination of angles, their trig the, the trig functions of the combination of angles, and the trig functions of the angles before the combinations made. This is all about alpha and beta separately. This is about alpha minus beta and figuring out what its function values are. So the geometry is this chord matches this chord. This length is the same as this length. And what are those lengths? They come from the distance formula point to point and in terms of the coordinates change in x squared, change in y squared, we can do it for this side and change in x squared minus change in y squared for the point from 1, 0 to cosin alpha minus beta, sine alpha minus beta. So let's lay it out with the distance formula. What we've got is on the circle on the left, cosin alpha minus cosin beta is the difference in x coordinates, that's squared. Sine alpha minus sine beta is the difference in y coordinates, that's squared. And for the circle on the right, Cosine alpha minus beta minus 1 is the difference in x coordinates. Sine alpha minus beta minus 0 is the difference in y coordinates. So let's expand it. Cosine alpha minus cosine beta squared, just the, the binomial squared. Sine alpha minus sine beta squared, foil it if you want to to get those terms, has to match cosine alpha minus beta minus 1 squared, so that's these three terms on the left hand, on the right hand side, and sine alpha minus beta minus 0 is just sine alpha minus beta, so here that is squared. So the distance formula squared matches the distance formula squared, now we can simplify that. 
Cosine squared alpha, sine squared alpha are both on the left. Cosine squared beta, sine squared beta are both on the left. Cosine squared alpha minus beta, sine squared alpha minus beta are both on the right. In all those cases, the Pythagorean identity says that combination of trig function's value is just 1. So 1, 1 for cosine squared plus sine squared alpha, cosine squared plus sine squared beta. 1 for cosine squared plus sine squared alpha minus beta, and the 1 that was there is still there. So I've got two ones that I can cancel from both sides, and what's left is two terms on the left, one term on the right, each of which has a coefficient of minus 2. Multiply through by that, or, or by, divide through by minus 2 to write it more simply, and what we get is cosine of alpha minus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. So we've got a formula for the cosine of the difference of two angles. Alpha and beta are the angles. Cosine of that difference is given by this expression. So if you've got it for the difference of angles, we can write it down for the sum as well. Alpha plus beta would be like alpha minus a minus beta. So cosine of minus beta matches cosine of beta since cosine is an even function. Sine of minus beta is minus the sine of beta since sine is an odd function. And we've got a slightly different pattern of signs here where the pluses and the minuses are. That's all that's different. Cosine alpha minus beta, cosine alpha plus beta. I'd like you to know these formulas. Memorize them if you have to. Memorize one and memorize the changes so that you'll know how to get from one to the other. And also I'd like you to look at the corresponding formulas for the sign of the sum and difference of angles and know those as well. Let's use this to calculate an exact value for a trig function of an angle that might not otherwise be accessible. How about the cosine of 105? 105 degrees is useful in this context because 105 can be written as a sum of angles that, uh, whose values you know exactly. Often it happens that there's more than one way to do a problem like this. And the consistency of mathematics guarantees that no matter how you set it up, applying facts correctly will get you to the same value as for a the trig function of this angle. So, 105 degrees is 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. Cosine of 105 is the cosine of that sum of angles, and the formula for the cosine of the sum of angles is the cosine of a sum is the cosine of the first, cosine of the second, minus the sine of the first times the sine of the second. Now maybe you want to draw your reference triangle, a 30-60-90 triangle, and an isosceles right triangle to read off these trig function values if you don't remember them. But cosine of 60 degrees is 1 half. Cosine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. So we've got values that we can plug in for these trig function values. Now we'll simplify. 1 times root 2 over 2 times 2 is root 2 over 4. Root 3 times root 2 is root 6 over 4. Common denominator 4. You could write the answer as root 2 minus root 6 over 4. Let me point out something. It's always a good little consistency check to make sure you haven't done a silly thing. Cosine is negative in quadrant 2, and that's where the angle 105 degrees lives. We did end up with a negative number here because root 2 is less than root 6, so the difference is negative, and that's good to know that at least we're in that, or at least we're consistent in uh, that observation about what the value should be.